So welcome back to the Roger Sarn Podcast, where we talk all things Army, and I'm your host, Sarn Cruz. And today we're talking about the Milper message that was just re-signed and re-submitted in reference to the Army's appearance and grooming modifications. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, sir. All right, guys, as I said, we're going to be talking about the um, the re I wouldn't say resubmission, but the Army put out again. They re-signed it as of 18 June of 2024, the appearance and grooming modifications. I put a video out on TikTok, and people can't find the Alarac, so I'll put the Alarac in the description below so you guys can just click on it, go to my Google Drive, and download it and look at it. Um, a lot of you guys already know this has been going on since last year, but some people just didn't know. So... As you guys already know, the channel is geared towards the individuals that don't know. Um, let me get right into it because I just got back today from doing MDMP and I'm tired, so I'm not going to hold you guys too much. Uh, but real fast, let's get a shout out to Tot Michael 57 And he wrote in reference to my NCOER support form video, it's uh, my Raider, senior leader, uh, didn't do my support form at the date of my rank. And now I'm my own support form. I'm doing my own support form for my NCOER that's doing a couple days. I really did not dig into what uh, NCOER was besides memorization of the forms, types of raiders, etc. Now that I did the support form, I look at my job completely different. I worked hard and did my best training. I did my best training my soldiers this past year, but was not specifically checking boxes on the way. Of course, I'm not here to check boxes, but there are plenty of stuff I could have did more specifically that I would have did along the way. My problem is I came up with a lot of classes and training, but I wasn't taking the time to write down what I was trained and untrained. Uh, then when things are, e are easily quant quantitative, like range scores and ACFT scores, I wasn't keeping numbers or names of those who I trained up or improved. I moved companies recently and they want my NCOER support form due in two days. I think half of what I will be doing is guesstimating. Um, that may not be the problem, but I'm, I'm a math guy and I really like numbers. I think I missed a greater opportunity to improve myself. One thing about doing my own NCOER support form is when I have to do it for someone else, I think I make them, a, I can make them better. More informed NCO for the future. Yeah, 100%. A um, couple things there before I get into it. We tend to say we're not bullet chasers and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, you still got to keep track of your performance because you are documenting what you're doing to be the best or be better than the next person so you can get promoted. So I wouldn't say chasing bullets, but I would say just keep track of keep a scorecard. And of course, when you're doing it for yourself or for someone else, when you finally do it, practice it, when you put it in practice, the theory, put it in practice, you get a lot better. So yeah, shout out to you. So let's get right into the agenda. Today, we're talking about Alarac 042-2024. And we're going to be talking about all the changes. And then we'll talk and get a quick uh, conclusion out of this. All right. So as always, let's go ahead and uh, get down to this uh, screen. So as you guys can see here, Alarac 0424, 042, 2024, uh, 18 uh, June 2024, so this year. And the subject is the United States grooming appearance and grooming modifications. Hey guys, bear with me. I'm kind of tired. So as you can see, this was dated back in 30 April of 2021 that they had the grooming policies and then they actually put it out last year, right? And here's a link that you guys can click on and that's for the older one. But the new one is up and we can, if you can't find it, you can just go into my um, Google Drive. So let's go down to the PowerPoint because that's what, what I like to do. All right, so HQDA modifications, right? G1 uniform uh, branch. 
So the purpose, these slides are informational only. They're not policy. The context and examples in the following slide contain extracted information from the ALARAC and coincide with the Secretary of the Army's memorandum, which was dated 30, 2021. Um, and then the information helps to inform and display examples of recent amendments to appear rinse and grooming standards. Okay, I'll get it together, tr guys, trust me. The Alarac serves as the standard until the next update of 670-1. A lot of you guys in my TikTok keep saying, why don't they just update the, the, the reg? Why don't they update the reg? It takes um between three and five years sometimes, maybe two to three, maybe, yeah, between three and five years for them to put an update out. Because if it's like that, they'll just keep, you see all these Alaracs. Could you imagine trying to update it every single time? So the Alaracs will do that. All right, so let's move into the uniform blend colors. The First Amendment that it talks about, and again, if you guys already knew this, cool, we're talking about those individuals, leaders, and brand new junior soldiers that don't know. Uh, amendment to paragraph 3-2 Alpha 1 Bravo, authorize males and females to wear highlights, all right? A uniform blend of colors, that's the type of highlights you have to have, so it has to be a natural color as long as it represents a professional and natural appearance. Now, when it talks about the blending of the colors, they talk about uh, colors must blend naturally together and not to display a vast difference of shades of natural colors. Then it gives you an example because it says natural black hair with blonde highlight streaks is not authorized. So mainly I think it's, it, as you can see, like this individual right here, he has kind of like a, uh, what is it called? A penny color. I don't know how to say that. I don't know what color it actually is. And then the highlights are kind of like lighter. And then you'll see the black with the with the dirty blondish, if you will. Um, a lot of times you see the blonde and then they'll have a, a, a even lighter blonde. So these are kind of the examples right here. And then obviously they have to give you the prohibited colors, which are going to be pretty much rainbow colors and fluorescent neon colors. And this also applies to wigs. So if you're rocking a wig, then it also applies to that as well. Rule of thumb down here says color does not grow human from the human head, then it's not natural. Uh, it's kind of weird because like when you do a, when you're blonde, the only way you can do it is kind of like bleach it a little bit. That's the way I, I know. I mean, my, my ex, she was blonde. So she used to just do some bleach and it get blonder, but Hey, it's a rule of thumb. That's just me personally. I should, I shouldn't be talking about personal opinions. All right. So minimum hair length. This also is, is, is amended, uh, three dash two alpha dash uh, three and alpha. So authorize no minimum hair length for female soldiers. Remember back in the day, we have like, you can only have a certain um, amount. Now it's, you can straight baldy if you want to. Uh, the hair must be, must have a tapered appearance and does not appear to, and, and if it, the hair does not part naturally, the soldier may cut a part in their hair. So you're going to have a part and it can't be more than three millimeters in width or the style with one part. So you can only do one part and the part has to be straight right there. It can't be slanted or curved and it'll fall where the soldier's natural part would be. So somewhere where the, where the corner of the, where the corner of your edge up is back. It's kind of a good rule of thumb. Um, and obviously they, I don't know, they had to put this in there. Soldiers will not shape or cut designs into their scalp and so the next one is going to be ponytails. Ponytails is uh, amending 3-3. And this is, yeah, 3-2 and 3 Charlie and Delta. And then 3-2 uh, Juliet. To authorize female soldiers to wear ponytails in uniform. Tracking, we already knew that, right? Hair will be neatly and conspicuously fastened and or secured in a bun. Singular, singular ponytails, two braids or singular braids. Are, are cool so you can have multiple locks braids twist or cornrows and they may come together in one or two braids or a single ponytail so you, whatever you have back there once you put it together you can make either a single ponytail two braids um and just put them together right braids on a singular ponytail may be worn down the center of the back in all uniforms but the length will not ex extend past the bottom of the shoulder blades when standing at the position of attention. So <laughs> they'll be walking around here in parade rest. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know why I laughed at that. 
There's no minimum length uh, for their wear of the ponytail or braids. So just uh, the little quick note down here is just consider safety, um, consider safety such as uh, ripping, tearing, pulling, or tangled due to being caught in objects or obstacles. So make sure you secure it properly. Ponytails continued. The only exception on the ponytail length or braid are while conducting tactical or physical training and ACUs or APFUs. So the length of the hair should be uh, secured and not hinder the performance or increase a safety risk. Uh, no portion of the bulk of the hair as measured from the scalp will be will exceed two inches except for the bun. So if you got a, like, a, a good example down here, is her she has um big she has like a bulk in the back she's a good example she has a bulk in the back shoot you could even say she's a good example because she kind of has a bulk in the back and it's not supposed to exceed two inches and then um it says it may be it has to be on the back of the head the 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 ponytail and it has to be centered and may not extend more than three and a half inches from the scalp or no wider than the head i don't know who would have a bun wider than the head but or the bulk, but definitely uh, make sure you adhere to that. In all uniforms, the unsecured hair will be worn center of the back of the head. The placement of the ponytail um, will not be on the side or the top of the head, so you can't be walking around with the ponytail up here or or, at, or like in a 45-degree angle. It has to be at the, in, in the back of the head, right? Um, and it will not be wider than the width of the head and not inf interfere again with the authorized, um, with the proper wear of author of authorized uh, headgear. So your headgear has to fit damn, damn near perfect, right? And if you're wearing the ACH or CVCs, it'll talk about that in a second. Make sure that is, it, that is um, not interfering with that. And again, safety considerations about the ripping, pulling, and tangles. All right, next, ponytail continued. So it gives you what's good like up here the way to do it and how not to do it all right so again it talks about um may not be worn over the shoulder the female soldier are wearing equipment such as the cvc and the ach the it will not interfere with it and it has to fit the way it's supposed to and then obviously they're going to give the commanders the ultimate decision on the risk of the free hanging ponytail or braids to, it's at their discretion to make sure that it's uh, safe. So here you, you can see these three up here at the center, straight down the back. Same here, the bulk, straight down the back. Over here, you see at the bottom, these two right here, over the shoulder is not authorized. And then here, the ponytail falls below the shoulder blades is not authorized. These two right here are out of regs. So make sure that you're going to have to have shorter hair or kind of like pick it up a little bit. Not bad so far. I'm not going to lie. Multiple hairstyles. I remember when I was at uh, BLC, we had uh, students that would come in with this type of hair right here with the little braid on the side. They would do like the braid, and but it would all be slicked back and we have to tell them that we weren't supposed to. But this was back in 2017, 18, 19. So it was, it was just, it hadn't come out yet. But there, so ladies are allowed to wear, female soldiers are allowed to wear Amended paragraph 3-2 alpha and 3-3 foxtrot to wear multiple styles of hair, right? The hairstyle at least at, at once as long as they are neat in appearance and does not impact the headgear again. So an example is going to be the braid twist or lock hairstyle with a side twist secure hair in place in a ponytail. So you can do two cornrows encompassing all the hair going into a ponytail so as long as it's not interfering with the headgear any type of headgear that you're supposed to be wearing you're in the clear and um i mean it's not bad i'm not gonna lie because uh back in the day at least when i was coming in we, females just had to just wear the hair straight back in a bun straight back in a bun straight back in a bun and just pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling on the hair it pulls your scalp, it creates tension, and then they got to use all this gel, and it, and it just damages the hair. It was so much that went into being a female soldier when it comes to the hair that it was um, it was rough. You just watch them. Like, it's rough. I can only imagine all the money that they had to spend in products just to, just to be um, within regs. 
Lipstick. Uh, amended paragraph 3-2 Bravo 3. To authorize female soldiers to wear solid color shades of lipstick that are not extreme. You always got to put that extreme in there, right? And extreme colors include but are not limited to the rainbow, purple, bright pink. Is pink in the rainbow? I don't think pink is in the rainbow. Bright red, gold, blue, black, hot pink, green, yellow, ombre. I don't even know what ombre is, but whatever. Fluorescent neon colors. Um, Man, I'm out of the blue. I, I like blue. <laughs> nah. But um, giant blue, obviously. Uh, natural colors to include tinted. Uh, glosses are authorized. The optional wear of lip liner colors must match the shade of lipstick being worn. So if you're wearing like lip liner like these, like I guess this is a, a, an example down here, then they have to match when you, when you put it on, right? And then here, this is to provide the general overview of natural colors. And they just put it on, on each arm. I don't know <laughs> why they do Sarn Davis like that. <laughs> they, they just, they, they, they just... <laughs> Caught her in the angle. She's she's locked in. All right. So next is the nail polish. So three two Charlie to authorize females soldiers to wear solid color shades of nail polish that are not extreme. Again, you got the street extreme colors. I'm not going to read them again. You can see them right here, and then and they got that ombre there. The only difference is is the French manicure, and one of the um, females told me on my TikTok what French was, and there's and then there's an American. So apparently between French and an American tip, one has a, a a curve, and the other one is just straight, and they're both I think they're white. The French tip and American tip, they both have the the white on it. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember which one's which. I gotta go back and look. I think the, maybe the American is the one bent. I don't know. Maybe the American, should, I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments. I, I do not remember, but she did clarify it. All right. So colors that are authorized to wear include, but are not limit, limited to the shades, N nude and natural shades, American manicure and light pink. All right. Those are authorized. Nail shapes that are extreme and not authorized are ballerina, stiletto, arrow, and coffin. Uh, so you could pretty much only wear square and round nails, which I think the round is probably like my best thing that I like. I'm not all into the coffin almond stilettos. I mean, I know that's like your guys' thing and you guys like it, but me personally, like for my woman, this is not like soldier. I, just give me the round one. I guess it's just because it's natural. I don't know. You guys tell me. Am I tripping? Am I crashing out real fast? My bad. I, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, male soldiers are authorized to wear clear nail nail polish. So go get your manicures, guys, and you can wear the clear nail polish and you're good to go. Um, however, the male soldiers will keep nails neatly trimmed. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. There you go. Neatly trimmed. I just cut them today. So as not to extend beyond the fingertip. Now, females soldiers will not exceed a nail length of quarter inch as measured from the tip of the finger. Now it's 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 weird because it seems like NCOs, man, leaders, don't be walking around here with the with the ruler from your freaking um from your ASUs or AGUs AGSUs and putting it to people's fingers and hair and all that stuff. Don't don't make it weird. Just don't make it weird. I know we've already been doing this for a year already, but just don't make it weird. Uh, earrings. Let's go to the amendment, uh, paragraph three dash four Delta to authorize female soldiers, the option to wear of wear of earrings in the army combat uniform, ACU stud earrings may be screw on, screw, screw on, clip on or post type earrings in gold. I don't know what post type is. I would only imagine it's just one cylinder. So silver or a clear diamond. You gotta have that. You gotta have that 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 bling blow in order to wear them. All right. So the diamond can be a single or a clustered, right? And clustered are typically when it's clustered. I think that's um like a princess cut. Uh, pearls are not authorized to wear in ACUs, but are authorized in formal attire, like service or dress uniform. So you can wear them in your dress uniform. You can wear them in your service uniform. You just can't wear your pearls in your regular ACU uniform. ACU. All right. The earrings will not exceed six millimeters or a quarter inch 
in diameter, so you can't have the big bling of blings. Um, and they must be unadorned. So they have to be plain, uh, spherical, so round or square with princess cut, which is the example right there. All right, so when worn, the earrings are going to fit snugly against the ear. Hoop, two-sided, or drop earrings are not authorized. Hoop, two-sided, or drop earrings are not authorized, all right? So female soldiers may wear earrings as long as they, they're matching pairs. So you can't have a square one and then a round one on the other side or a sphere or, or, or a stud uh, with only one ear per standard lobe. So earrings are not authorized to be worn in the cartilage, industrial, transverse lobe, trag tragus, or conch part of the ear. And then um, earrings will not be worn in ACU during physical fitness while tactical environment or out pretty much out in the field and forward environments, it sounds like it. And uh, earrings are not authorized in APFU. So you can't be wearing earrings during PT time or whenever you're in PTs. So just make sure you do that. So... A good rule of thumb that I would say is just during normal duty hours, right? And then here are the examples of the what not to do and what to do and all that. All right, so that's that's all I have for you guys. I think that was the last slide. Hey, that's all I have for you guys. Hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, I'll leave the Alarac in the description. Uh, like, comment, follow, subscribe, all that cool stuff. If you're listening on the podcast, Go ahead and uh, drop a download and a review. Follow me on my socials. You can either click the link tree in the description, it's and it'll take you to all my socials, or you can just type in Roger Sarn and you'll find me on any social media. Um, I appreciate it, and as always, you don't have to embrace the suck if you got the right tools in your ruck. I'm Sarn Cruz, and I'm out. Peace. Roger Sarn.